Coming up. What could President Biden's recovery plan mean for your bottom line? I know what I just described has not come cheaply. Will the plan lead us on the road to recovery? We must act now. Or plunge us deeper into recession? Then, twist it out of place. What am I going to do? Lower back pain leaves this man in agony. Almost to the point of passing out. See what got him back on his feet on today's 700 Club. Welcome back to the 700 Club. A dire warning from Israel. Iran could have a nuclear bomb within months, maybe even weeks. The stage is being set for a possible military confrontation between these two enemies. So how will the Biden administration handle this huge foreign policy challenge? Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. As the Biden administration seeks a new path with Iran that could bring back the 2015 nuclear deal, Israel is sending its own signals to the regime. IDF Chief of Staff Aviv Kohavi has announced the military will have plans ready to strike Iran's nuclear program. We're taking care of these plans and developing them during the coming year. Those who decide on carrying them out, of course, are the political leaders, but these plans have to be on the table, existing, ready and practiced. Israeli leaders see the 2015 Iran deal as flawed that would only pave the way for the regime to develop a nuclear bomb. For its part, Iran is pushing limits with plans to take uranium enrichment to a level just below weapons grade. Iran is provoking a conflict. I think a big question is whether President Biden and his team can figure out a way to stop them. Negotiation would be a good way to do it. Nobody wants a war in this region again, but, but Biden is going to be tested. Middle East expert Joel Rosenberg says Iran is telegraphing intentions by taking rogue action. The regime recently seized the South Korean tanker and its crew near the Strait of Hormuz. Rosenberg says it's important that Biden and his team of advisors learn from the mistakes of his former boss, such as not including regional players like Israel, the UAE, Bahrain and the Saudis when negotiating the Iranian nuclear deal. But also the flaws in the deal that didn't deal with missiles, that didn't deal with terrorism, that didn't deal with any of these other issues and left all these loopholes. Loopholes like Iran's widespread use of proxies across the Middle East, such as Hezbollah in Lebanon and Syria, the Houthis in Yemen, and militias in Iraq that have attacked U.S. troops there. The Iranian art of war is based on fighting on other people's lands by other people's hands. Israeli Reserve Brigadier General Asaf Orian says the biggest factor shaping the Middle East right now is America's transition to power. Trump gave the Iranians the impression that he's pretty uh, unpredictable. According to Orion, the Iranians took extreme caution about launching attacks against the U.S. with Trump in office. The stage is set for the Biden administration. While we focus on the nuclear as the most uh, severe threat, we shouldn't uh, overlook Iran's dual strategy of doing also indirect proxy warfare across the Middle East. Rosenberg adds Biden must keep maximum pressure on Iran to create the right conditions to negotiate and avoid war. All eyes are going to be on Biden. And if he flinches in the light of Iran's intransigence, it's going to be a very troubled season ahead. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, welcome to the White House, President Biden. And guess what? The world is in danger. Uh, I, I don't think Iran is going to try to intentionally come after the U.S., but at the same time, I do think they're going to intentionally come after Israel and intentionally come after Saudi Arabia, and if we get in the way, we will absolutely be a, be a target. It was just a few years ago that they shot down one of our drones, and we were at the brink of war. Uh, and it was just a few years ago that uh, one of their uh, anti-aircraft installations took down a commercial liner because they misidentified it uh, as a military jet. And they weren't sure what military jet or what it was, but they still shot it down. 
So there's a hair trigger here, and we could be at war and could be at war very quickly. Here at home, January has become the deadliest month yet during the coronavirus pandemic, and the Biden administration is warning that the death toll will continue to rise sharply. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? That's right, Gordon. Unfortunately, the Biden White House says up to 90,000 more people could die in the next four weeks. This while the government struggles to administer the vaccine and schools debate reopening. CBN's Heather Sells has the story. COVID-19 has taken the lives of more than 425,000 Americans. And the latest White House forecast shows that in the next month, the U.S. will reach between 479 and 514,000 deaths. The federal government is racing to get the vaccine out as many Americans desperately try to get their shot. In Kansas, hundreds of people over 80 waited in the cold. While in Alabama, people lined up in their cars for hours. Two hours, we moved maybe four spaces in this line of cars till, until my mom said, I can't take it anymore. We have to go. The president says a million extra doses will go out next week, but his advisors are cautious. It will be months before everyone who wants a vaccine will be able to get one. There are some positive signs. New confirmed cases and hospitalizations have dropped drastically in the last two weeks. And in some states like California and New York, authorities are easing up on restrictions as the numbers get better. Every curve statewide is down. That's good news. Uh, we will then adjust the valves to those facts. But the CDC director wants Americans to remain vigilant. She says COVID mutations are now confirmed in half of the country. They're more transmissible, which can lead to increased number of cases and increased stress on our already taxed health care system. Experts believe that by March, the highly contagious variant from the UK will likely become the dominant source of infection in the U.S. On another pandemic front, many school districts are debating reopening. In Philadelphia, kids haven't been in their classrooms since the pandemic began. The new plan transitioned back with a hybrid model. The earlier years of the child's education is some of the most important years. Uh, and these kids are almost a year behind now. In Chicago, the mayor wants to reopen schools, but so far, the teachers union has said no. I cannot, as mayor, in good conscience, as a mayor, as a mother, and a proud resident of the city, leave these students behind who are failing, failing, when a safe solution is absolutely possible. The Biden administration wants to reopen most schools within 100 days. A new CDC report says that children should go back to class and that the risk of virus transmission is small if precautions are followed. Heather Sell, CBN News. Thank you, Heather. Health care tops the Biden agenda today, reversing some of President Trump's policies. He'll be signing orders to expand enrollment in Obamacare and to reverse a federal policy that allows taxpayer funding for international health care groups that offer abortion counseling or referrals. Wednesday, Biden signed executive orders to fight climate change and to move the country away from fossil fuels. Biden says it would create jobs. Republicans, though, criticized his plan as a job killer, saying it would hurt the mining, coal, and gas industries. Well, in the ongoing debate over online censorship and internet misinformation, Twitter has launched a new way to moderate its platform. It's called Birdwatch, and it lets some users, both experts and non-experts, write notes and flag certain posts for possible issues. Some critics question the plan, suggesting that it could be another way to censor certain types of online speech. Well, as social distancing requirements have become the norm, even taking over holiday gatherings, kids are living lives that are much lonelier. That means turning to screens and technology. CBN's Charlene Aaron recently spoke with an addiction specialist about what parents can do to help kids unplug. Given the combination of the web, social media, and multiple mobile devices, today's youth are no doubt the most tech-savvy generation ever. That fact, combined with a global pandemic and virtual education, is driving tech use among kids even higher. It's universal at this point. 
Addiction specialist Joshua Andrus started Parents Overcoming Electronics. He says kids often turn to their devices to deal with emotional struggles. If we're looking at uh, tech addiction, it's 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 their version of telling the alcoholic to just stop drinking. And that's just never effective because they're going there to their devices to fill a void. In a series of books on the issue, he highlights lessons and alternatives for the whole family. Teaching hmm. kids ownership about what their their home environment looks like, but then spreading that out. Parents start to get wise about you know, what quality time looks like. His latest release, called Thriving During COVID and Beyond, helps kids endure this historic part of their lives. The purpose of it is to help our kids to see themselves as, as warriors that have gone through a Sentinel event. They're the, the first generation that had to do school exclusively online for a time to see themselves as most prepared for that. He also urges parents to create stronger bonds by becoming partners with their kids. If we can build in healthy disciplines where we're spending 15 minutes engaging with our kids in their favorite card game, and that's all we have, then that's still 15 minutes that we didn't have yesterday, and that was an intentional use of our time. Start finding things that you look forward to, but also monitoring the time to see if you can push it up a little bit more and more. Results Andrus believes are well worth it in the end. What I notice is, is when I in, engage with my kids or I engage with their friends, they, they get their bucket filled of that connection they're really seeking through social media or they're seeking through video gaming. They get it filled in a less superficial way. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Thanks, Charlene. Gordon, we're talking about a pre-pandemic phenomenon that's been exacerbated by COVID lockdowns and safety measures. Well, it certainly has been exacerbated where uh, it looks like uh, these devices are the only way to have any kind of uh, connection where you have these Zoom meetings or Microsoft Team meetings and, and how do you, um, you know, just get things done. But realize the, the, what happens when you get wired in to one of these devices, it does actually change how you think uh, and how you respond. And we, we're seeing a whole generation of digital natives uh, that a, is absolutely tied to these devices. And if you don't think it's addicting, um, well, think again. Uh, I had my own experience last night. I was cooking dinner in the kitchen and my wife had left her phone in there. And it started doing its little thing of sending notifications and all of that. And I found myself overwhelmed with it. I had to stop cooking. We have to, we have to deal with the phone. Uh, and, 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 you know, what kind of normal world is that? Uh, it, it shouldn't be that way. Devices shouldn't command our attention and shouldn't trigger response mechanisms in us. They need to be uh, our servants, if you will, and, and useful when we want to use them as opposed to demanding our attention. Uh, but here's the really bad news, and this is really bad news. Uh, the people who are creating the devices and creating the apps for the devices absolutely know about the addictive qualities of it and frankly are taking advantage of it and uh, are trying to do more so you spend more time on their app or on their device. Uh, that is chilling to know that people with degrees in psychology, with degrees in sociology, are, are doing that and doing that for profit. Terry? Well, coming up, jet skiing, four-wheeling, on the water, in the woods, this outdoorsman never slowed down. So what hit him like a baseball bat and left him crawling in pain? He'll tell you himself, that's later on. And up next, a steep price tag, including three and a half trillion dollars in new taxes. Will President Biden's COVID rescue plan send the economy into a death spiral? Well, that's the question coming up. Hi, folks, this is Pat Robertson, and I want to thank you for watching The 700 Club. Now, make sure to click the subscribe button below so you'll never miss an episode. The team at CBN always reads and responds to your comments and prayer requests, so keep them coming. Tomorrow, a new era of abortions. What we subsidize, we will expect to increase. Congress and the White House are set to expand reproductive rights radically. When we find ourselves on a human rights list next to China and North Korea, it is a sign that something has gone dramatically wrong. And guess who will be footing the bill? 
taxpayers, Christians, responsible for paying for abortions. Can these new laws be stopped? Presidents change. On tomorrow's 700 Club. Stay connected with CBN News all day across our platforms. The promise is a big stimulus to boost the American economy, but President Biden's relief plan comes with a hefty price tag of $2 trillion. The president also has bigger plans for even greater spending and higher taxes in the years ahead. The question is, will his plans backfire? Caitlin Burke has the story. President Joe Biden is preparing to spend big. His goal? to rescue Americans and the U.S. economy from the COVID-19 pandemic. The question remains, is he spending too much? They cannot watch people lose their jobs, and we have to act. We have to act now. The Biden administration's nearly $2 trillion rescue package would pump money into vaccine deployment, reopening schools, funding state and local governments, and of course, putting money directly into the hands of Americans. It's a steep price tag, but Biden says the nation can't afford anything less. You know, I know what I just described does not come cheaply, but failure to do so will cost us dearly. Economists agree getting out of the pandemic is the first step towards economic recovery. Where they don't agree begins from that point on. By some estimates, Biden has proposed close to $11 trillion in long-term spending plans investing in health care, infrastructure, energy, and education over the next decade. President Biden uh, promises massive new spending, most of which, frankly, is the proper priority of state governments. So he wants to expand education spending and transportation spending. But that's why we have state governments. We don't need the federal government increasing spending on that. Those are all spaces where we have lacked adequate investment for a long time not just four years, longer than that. You need to try to make up for the investments that have been neglected over time. Those are specific areas of spending that I do think it's important to do. A third of that new spending would be courtesy of more than $3.5 trillion in new taxes, including reversing Trump's tax cuts for large corporations and high-earning families, along with some new taxes. Critics say the tax hikes would hurt the economy, including many smaller businesses, at a time when we can't afford it. President Biden wants to raise taxes, not to reduce the deficit, but to increase spending. So I think this would be a death spiral for the economy. Uh, higher taxes would damage growth, and that would push debt ever higher compared to the size of the economy. Chris Edwards, director of tax policy studies at the Cato Institute, predicts it would send big business back overseas. Big corporations, they don't have to locate in America. If you're building if you're building uh, electric cars or you're building semiconductors, you can locate your new factory anywhere. You don't have to invest in the United States. So by raising the corporate tax rate, you'll be driving those new factories and facilities uh, overseas. And ultimately, that is bad for American workers. Lawrence Kotlikoff, a professor of economics at Boston University, disagrees. He says there are incentives that can lure businesses to invest in the U.S. That's called 100% expensing. You may also have heard of accelerated depreciation. These are ways to say, uh, look, you, Caitlin, are investing in the U.S. You're going to have to pay a high tax rate. But on the other hand, we're going to give you some money up front. Some economists also warn that Biden's tax increases will trickle down to the average American. If economic growth slows and businesses don't grow as quickly, the American worker won't make as much money and will end up with a lower standard of living. The almost $28 trillion national debt is another major concern. Austin Goolsby, a former economic advisor to President Obama and current advisor to Biden, says raising taxes is how we begin to address our debt. It's going to involve more revenue. It's going to involve tax rates going back to something like the historic rates um, and historic levels, not the depressed levels on the, uh, that, that we've seen in the last three years three and a half years. Critics say only a decrease in spending will make a difference. The way to chip away at the federal government uh, debt is simply to lower the growth rate in spending or freeze spending for a few years while the economy uh, recovers. Uh, that, that way we can get this deficit on a downward uh, path. 
Biden's economic policies will have to make it through Congress. Budget bills, including tax bills, need 51 votes to pass in the Senate. So each Democrat will have to back any legislation that comes through, or it will need bipartisan support. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Oh, my, my, how things change. I remember four years ago in that presidential race, uh, the argument that because America has the highest corporate tax rate in the industrialized world, that it was causing our major corporations to offshore most of their profits and keep it outside of the United States. So it would be exempt from U.S. taxation. And it was over a trillion dollars that they had in cash that could have been invested in the American economy and wasn't because of our tax rate. So here we have, again, let's, let's, let's try to uh, get corporations to, quote, pay their fair share, close quote, uh, not realizing, well, they have their choice. Uh, they can locate wherever they want, and they can locate based on tax policy. And so what you're doing is instead of uh, increasing business and investment in the United States and thereby employment in the United States. What you're doing is offshoring it. Uh, that problem was fixed and a lot of money came into the U.S. economy and we've all seen that. Uh, why in the world would you go back to uh, policies that, that drive it away? And I strongly disagree that, well, we can tweak it so that you can expense in year one uh, and, and there are ways to, to front load that. Uh, any tax lawyer, any tax accountant will, will tell you, well, you can do that anyway. Um, there are plenty of ways to either lease it or uh, take the five-year depreciation uh, where, where you can do that in a short period of time. But why commit to a lifetime of higher taxes on your investment uh, for a small one-time year one uh, stimulus? It, it just doesn't make sense. And businesses try to make sense. They try to have rational decisions with their investment. So if we raise their taxes, guess what's going to happen? Uh, their money, their profit money from international operations is going to stay international. And it's not going to come back to help America. We need to pray. We're in a desperate situation. Uh, the, the, the people who are renting and out of work, do they need help to make sure they don't get evicted? The answer is yes. Do people who are unemployed need stimulus checks? The answer is yes. Do people with low wage jobs need help? The answer is yes. But this stimulus package would allow families with $300,000 a year in income to receive a stimulus check. And why go into debt to do that? You're not helping at the exact point of need those people who have the most need. So let us, let us pray. You look, at, you look at the expanding federal deficit, and we're coming close to a point where we will never be able to pay it off. And what does that do to our currency? Uh, what ultimately do, does that do to our republic if our currency fails? These are enormous decisions with enormous ramifications, uh, and we need prayer. We're asking people to pray for America. If you'd like to join with us, all you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Uh, or you can go to the website, PrayForAmerica.com, or text PRAY, that word, to 71777. Terry? Up next, the lights went out because this couple couldn't pay their bills. How did a desperate prayer for help lead to an idea for a side business? And what made their income from that side business shoot up by 400%? Well, the answers are coming up. Plus, like a freight train, that's how this woman described the sound of a monster hurricane as it barreled through her town. She thought she was gonna die. Find out what happened instead after this. Do you have questions about God? Call us. It's toll free. 1-800-700-7000 or check out this link. He founded a global ministry interviewed world leaders, was a leading presidential candidate, and he has walked with the living God. In Pat Robertson's latest book, 
Discover the principles that guided this extraordinary life and how they can shape your future. When you become a CBN partner, we'll send you your copy of the highly acclaimed book, I Have Walked with the Living God. Call now. Well, first their electricity was cut off, and then later Brian and Rochelle had their truck repossessed. This couple was falling further and further behind on their bills. So they uttered a desperate prayer for help. And what happened next? And how did it lead to a 400% increase in income? Just watch. For years, both Brian and Rochelle Lindsay were teachers with a combined income that allowed them to have a financially stress-free life. If I wanted to spend, no problem, because I knew every two weeks I would get a check, she would get a check as well. Then right before they had their third child, Rochelle quit teaching to be a stay-at-home mom. I just felt like God was leading me to stay home. We didn't talk about like how we were going to budget and what we were going to spend. At first, they used Rochelle's retirement to get by. When they ran out, they didn't have enough to live on. It was a lot of fear of not really knowing what tomorrow will look like, or even that day, just, you know, us really being poor. And I felt like a lot of it was my fault. Everything seems to just come crashing down all at one time. You know, on top of medical bills, car payments, light bills, phone bills, student loan debt. We were taking food from churches. Sometimes the Lindsays couldn't even pay their utilities on time. I was in the kitchen cooking and our lights were turned off. Oh, this is very humbling, <laughs> but I had to go up to, a, it's the ministry that help you pay your bills. I was frustrating, difficult, because being the head of the household, that's your number one priority as a man. Take care of your family. And when you just can't, it's, it's pretty tough. Brian and Rochelle are Christians, but they had a hard time trusting God with their money. I just felt like he wasn't moving fast enough, so made some stupid choices or just, you know, continued to wallow in depression and self-pity. The couple occasionally gave a church, but usually thought they couldn't afford it. Because of fear, just pure fear that, you know, I may not have money for gas. I could use my tithing money. After their truck was repoed, the Lindsays knew something had to change. I felt like it was, what else is there to do but trust God? They surrendered their own plans and prayed for help. Shortly after that, Brian got an idea for a side business to increase their income and get them out of their financial hole. I saw two of my former students leaned up against their mother while she's trying to tell them to pedal. And as soon as I saw it, Immediately, I was like, that's it. I'm going to teach kids how to ride bike. Mr. B's bike camp took off. God blessed me with this business. The first year, I think he had 20 students. The next year, he had over 70. Soon, the couple started intentionally tithing. My mom always said, hey, don't just tithe without knowing what are you believing for? What are you praying for? So I started writing on the back of my envelopes, uh, increase in business and a new truck. As the couple continued to give, Brian got that new truck, and the income from Mr. B's bike camp shot up by 400%. Business even increased during the coronavirus pandemic. Once again, they have a comfortable lifestyle and no longer worry about how they're going to pay their bills. Now the mindset is, who can we bless? Who can we bless? The Lindsays encourage others to trust God with their financial struggles and take a step of faith. With Everything going on, I feel God needs you to step out of your comfort zone so that he can use you in the way that he needs to use you. You have to surrender. Just say, hey, Lord, I'm coming to you first. Right now, straight off the top, what do you want for me during this situation? I believe that, you know, God's word is true, that you do reap what you sow. God not only wants us to be receivers, but give, ultimately, is to see him glorified and lifted up through all of this. God will be glorified because you honor him. And when you honor him, wonderful things happen. Jesus said it clearly, 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That means his dominion, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things will be added unto you. For Brian and Rochelle, they put the principles into practice. And Brian's mother taught him well. When you tithe, when you give, make your request known. Uh, ask God for specific things. When you ask him for specific things, then you know he is answering and he gets glorified from that. So ask and ask largely. And then when it comes, remember this. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is his day. Realize God wants to establish his covenant. He wants to do it for you and for your children and for your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. He wants to establish his covenant with his people. What is he looking for? Well, he's looking for your obedience to say, all right, God, I'll live it your way. I'll come into the, your kingdom. I'll submit to your dominion. And then I will pray and ask and know and have confidence my prayers will be answered. This is January 2021. If you want to put these principles into practice, this isn't something you do on again, off again. This is something you say, I commit as my life. I want to do this week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, I want to do this, and I want to do it cheerfully, and I want to do it generously. If you want to start doing that, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. We have a lot of different club levels. We have 700 Club at $20 a month. We have 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. Uh, we have 2,500 club, then we have founder at $5,000 a year, and then chairman circle at $10,000 a year. At whatever level, call and join. And when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. You know your giving will be on time and every single month. And we can send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. So if you'd like those, call us, 1-800-700-7000. Say, I want to join Pledge Express. You can go to CBN.com. When you give monthly on the Internet, you automatically sign up for it. Or you can text, text CBN to 71777. Either way, do it now, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? I'll never do it again. That's what Cassie Moe vowed after riding out Hurricane Laura. Cassie figured she'd be okay hunkered down in her brick home. Instead, during the storm, she feared she was going to die. Rita was bad, but I figured, well, we can stay because I had a brick home. But this was way worse than Rita. Cassie Moe and her family hunkered down during Hurricane Laura in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Sound like freight trains. I was just waiting for the roof to come off and just taking us. I thought we were gonna die. I really did. I'll never do it again. I'll never stay. The damage was so bad, after the storm, practically everyone in her neighborhood left. I was the only one in the, the whole seventh division that stayed. And it's like I was helpless. The damage to her roof was covered by insurance, but the devastation to her yard was not. Try getting a lot of the stuff up. You know, some of my daughter's friends came, but there's only so much that I can do. I didn't know where to turn. I, I didn't know what to do. Then a crew from Operation Blessing arrived with cleaning supplies, chainsaws, and more. It was so hard to find supplies, and then here y'all come. I felt relief. I felt found. Operation Blessing volunteers cut trees, cleared debris, and provided hope in Cassie's time of need. If y'all wouldn't have come, I don't know what, I don't know what I've done. And I know I cannot thank y'all enough. And all I can say is God is good. God is good. You know, Cassie said, I felt found. What she really is saying is somebody sees me in my need. 
You know, that's really what 700 Club members do every day all around the world. They see people in need and they do something about it. That's what happens when you send a gift of 65 cents a day, $20 a month, and become a 700 Club member. You are part of that team that exists. It's already in place here in the United States and internationally. And you really have an opportunity to meet people just like Cassie right at their point of need. And not just give them the helping hand that they need, but that sense that somebody sees me, I am known, somebody cares about me. You know, you can't put a price tag on hope, can you? But today you can be a part of that army of people who is caring, who's already decided we're going to do this, we're going to commit, we're going to make a difference. If you haven't joined the 700 Club, will you do that right now? It's so simple. Our number's toll free, 1-800-700-7000. You just call and say, I want to join the 700 Club. As Gordon told you a few minutes ago, there are many club levels you can join. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a general club member. Maybe you already are. Would you go up to 700 Club Gold? That's a gift of $40 a month. Or you might want to join our 1,000 Club. That's $84 a month. Become a 2,500 Club member or a founder at $5,000 a year. That breaks down to $417 a month. Right now, today, this moment, you can have the peace of knowing that you are stepping up to the plate, making a difference, caring about others. And isn't that what we're all supposed to do? I have something special for you. When you join the 700 Club or increase your membership, uh, we're going to send you Pat's latest book. You're going to love it. It's called I've Walked with the Living God, the history and story of Pat's journey, his faith, God's response and faithfulness. We want you to have this. We think it'll really make a difference in your own walk. Plus, when you call, if you say, I'd like to use Pledge Express, electronic monthly giving, you know your bank does all the work, saves us some money so we can put even more of your gift into the lives of people like Cassie, we're going to send you a Power for Life teaching. You'll get one of these every month. It's our way of saying thank you for caring. So right now, 1-800-700-7000, just say I want to join the 700 Club, and I'd like to do it using Pledge Express. We say thank you. Court. Well, when you join the 700 Club, you'll also receive access to the audio version, I Have Walked with the Living God, read by actor Kevin Sorbo. You can listen at home or on the go on your computer, phone, smart TV, uh, any of your favorite devices using the CBN Family app. App your streaming link when you join as a CBN partner today. Well, just imagine watching your grandchildren go hungry. That's what broke a grandmother's heart in Cambodia. The pandemic wiped out her family's livelihood. Her neighbors were also suffering, so she had nowhere to turn. What kept them all from starving? Take a look. 12-year-old Vanny, his brothers, and a cousin were all hungry because the family had run out of food during the COVID-19 pandemic. Normally, we would have some porridge because that's what grandma sells. Vanny's grandparents have been raising all of the children ever since their parents abandoned them. Grandpa lost his job and Grandma lost her ability to sell food at her house after the government shutdown. No one come to my place anymore. Everyone is scared that they will catch the virus. Grandma said watching the four grandkids go hungry has been the hardest thing for her. I am heartbroken when my grandkids have nothing to eat. I try to borrow from the neighbor. They are having a tough time too. Before the pandemic, Vanny prayed to become a Christian after watching an episode of CBN Superbook. He told his brother and cousin about the Bible cartoons and they became followers of Jesus too. Finally, Vanny invited his grandma to church and she also became a Christian. Recently, when Operation Blessing learned that Vanny's family was suffering from the economic impact of the shutdown, we gave them a supply of food. Then, to help them have a more stable income moving forward, we gave them 100 chickens to raise and sell. We have food to eat. I can sell eggs and the chickens and earn $15 a day. When the virus comes down, I will be able to restart my food business too. Thank you for saving our lives. 
Well, that thank you goes from Cambodia to you as a member of the 700 Club. If you're a member, you are part of that outreach. If you're not a member, join with us. And if you are a member, consider increasing. Consider increasing in 2021. Go to 700 Club Gold at $40 a month or 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year, and that breaks out to $84 a month. At whatever level, do it now and make sure you ask for Pledge Express, electronic monthly giving, and we send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. A lot of different ways you can sign up for Pledge Express. You can call us, 1-800-700-7000. Say, I'd like to join Pledge Express. You can go to CBN.com. You can give monthly on the Internet and automatically join. Or you can text CBN, those letters, CBN, to 71 Seven seven seven. Either way, do it now. And when you join, we'd like to thank you by sending you my father's latest book. It's called I Have Walked with a Living God. Here's a segment from the book that describes what it means to be a servant leader. Take a look. Hi, this is Pat Robertson with an excerpt from my new book, I Have Walked with a Living God read by actor Kevin Sorbo. I hope it will help you in your walk with God. The Bible says that although Jesus was God himself, he did not feel that equality with the Father was something to be grasped. Instead, he took on the form of a man and became obedient unto death. True leaders are those who are humble and who feel that their calling is to serve their fellow workers, not dominate them. Get your copy today when you become a CBN partner. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. These challenging times call for strength and faith. You're going to be just fine, just fine. You need the wisdom to manage new responsibilities. Great job. And Callie, please write a sentence. And the courage and favor to fulfill hey, life's demands. Let's, let's go. Get the insight and power you need to triumph from Pat Robertson's new book, I Have Walked with the Living God. Pat shares his miraculous journey that will inspire you and grow your faith. If you can take one thing away from this book, it is this. Get rid of the clutter in your life. Instead, spend your time in the presence of the Lord. Learn how to overcome adversity and live in God's blessing. Get I Have Walked with the Living God today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to become a CBN partner. Call now. Welcome back to Washington for this uh, for the CBN News Break. The Biden administration is creating a commission on reforming the Supreme Court. Politico reports the specific mandate of the commission is still being decided, but some members have already been chosen. Biden promised such a commission during the campaign amid the debate over packing the Supreme Court. The commission's report is expected within six months. Well, San Francisco will be dropping some famous names from its public schools. The school board voting to change the names of 44 schools for reasons including quote, dishonorable legacies. That means renaming schools after George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, who both owned slaves, and Abraham Lincoln, who ended slavery. Critics say his administration, though, was harsh to Native Americans. Several other former presidents and other famous historical figures like Paul Revere also made the list, as is current Democratic senator and former San Francisco mayor Dianne Feinstein. You can read more about this story and always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Gordon and Terry will be back with more Today's 700 Club right after this. Hi, this is Pat Robertson. We don't know what the future holds for different tech companies, but we always want to be able to share the good news through the media. So I want to invite you to watch our program on CBNFamily.com or download the CBN Family app. This way you can have direct access to the 700 Club and other specials from CBN, and you won't miss a thing. Now just click below to get more details and watch with us. Like a baseball bat slamming his back, 
That's how John Chase described his excruciating injury. Even after receiving an epidural shot, this rugged outdoorsman was in such intense pain that he actually shot, thought about shooting himself. So what stopped him right in his own garage? Take a look. At over 60 years old, John Chase loves living on the water and staying active. So my whole life's been activity. I mean, jet skiing, uh, four-wheeling, um, you know, that was my line of business. So we were constantly, you know, very active, you know, in the woods um, and on the water. In March of 2020, his life came to a halt while working under his boat trailer. I guess I had twisted myself in the wrong position. I had the most excruciating hit, like a baseball bat in my back um, feeling, um, and then it was just excruciating pain. Um, and just crawled out of there into the house and made it to the bedroom. John tried to endure the pain as he drove himself to the doctor. The way the doctor explained it to me that your bottom lower disc, um, the very lowest one had majorly slipped over um, from me on crawling underneath that boat and had jammed that sciatic nerve. And it was not letting off, it was not going to free itself. The doctor said John might need surgery, but suggested they try a series of three epidural shots two weeks apart. After the first one, John didn't feel any relief. I'm a tough grown man, but when you're screaming out this horrible type of scream um, to relieve the pain and, it, and don't nonstop, is the only, that's the type of pain is the only way I can describe it. And your face is white, you're sweating, you're, you know, just almost to the point of passing out type of pain. As John waited for his second epidural, the pain became so severe, he didn't think he could take it any longer. At the time I was going through this, um, very weird thoughts go through your arm. And the pain was so bad. I thought about shooting myself. Um, that's how bad the pain was. And, uh, but I wouldn't do it because I have a daughter. Finally, John received his second epidural, but still didn't feel any relief. That's when I really, really um, started losing faith. Um, where am I going from here? What am I going to do, you know? One day while lying in his bed, John decided to crawl into his garage for a change of scenery and to watch TV. Flipping through the channels, he landed on the 700 Club, and Pat Robertson was praying. And I'm looking kind of down at that point, and um, he says, there's a gentleman out there. <laughs> Somebody has pulled a muscle in your right uh, uh, side. It's the side of you. You were doing some kind of stretching or exercise, and, and that muscle pulled and you've been in pain, just reach over and touch it in the name of Jesus, touch. And I was like, he's gotta, that's gotta be for me. How else, how else could that be for? And uh, so I said, like, let me, what the heck, let me try it. <laughs> so I got up out of the chair and um, I have this hundred feet more driveway. And I said, I'm gonna walk that. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna see if Scott, if this is real. It was so incredible. Nothing, no limp, no pain, no nothing. And I, I was so much joy. <laughs> I walked the driveway back and forth three times <laughs> to make sure it was real. <laughs> and. Uh, I've had nothing since. Today, still free from back pain, John is thrilled to be back to his active lifestyle and enjoying the beauty of God's creation around him. God's country, <laughs> it's so beautiful here. So, you know, it's like you wanna get out there on the water and, and just enjoy, you know, the peace and the quiet and, and just, you know, it's so beautiful. I just wish everyone would take more time for God. He is a healer. When something that extreme happens to you, you are so aware of the presence of God. 
But you know what? The presence of God is with us all the time. We just get busy or we get understandably caught up in the things that sometimes are hurting us, are causing pain in our lives or in our bodies and our relationships. But God is there all the time. We want to take some time to pray for you today as we've listened to John's story. Here's one, Gordon, that I, I, this is another great testimony. Leonard lives in Michigan City, Indiana, suffered from a bad knee, decided to tune into this program while watching he heard you pray. There is someone named Leonard laying his hands on his left knee and God has just healed that knee. That pain, discomfort, the inability to move it, all of that's gone. Just get up and realize you can test it. You can lean on it. You can put your weight on it. God has healed you and restored you in Jesus' name. So just like John, by faith, Leonard touched his hurting knee with both hands, said he started feeling electricity running through the top of his head like a wave. Instantly, Hallelujah. his pain was Hallelujah. gone. <laughs> it's absolutely what a mighty wonderful. God we serve. Here's Claude from California. Uh, he was watching the 700 Club, hoping he would hear his issues mentioned. Last month, during the healing prayer, Terry said, there is someone who has a social drinking problem and you drink white wine because it seems less of a problem. But it is a problem nonetheless. God is taking it from you. Claude knew the word was meant for him. Alcohol had dominated his life for the last 20 years. No more. As of this email, he is 28 days sober, has no desire to drink again. Wow. And God is good and he will be good for you. What, what, what did it take for Leonard? What did it take for John? What did it take for Claude? It, it took hearing a word and then saying, well, that has to be for me. Uh, they're talking about me. And I want you to know the words are for you. They're for you. God cares infinitely about you. You are worth the price that Jesus paid for you. Uh, here, here's a word for you. If you have any doubt, it's for you. Whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have ever lasting life. You are a whosoever. The word in James chapter 5, if any of you are sick, let them call, and the prayer of faith will raise them up. You can be part of any. We're going to pray in an act of faith, just what you heard in these reports. People laid hands on that area of the body that needed healing. You can lay hands on yourself and you can believe and God will heal you. He watches over his word to perform it. Let's pray believing. Let's be a whosoever would believe. Let's do that and get the same results. Lord, we come to you. We come boldly to the throne of grace. We come boldly into your mercy, not on anything that we have done, but on what Jesus has done, that he died for us, that he traded his life so that we could be with you for all eternity. So Lord God, stretch forth your hand to do miracles, restore health, restore everything that has been taken, give life and life more abundantly because that's the reason you came. There's someone you're laying your right hand on your right kidney in the back and you're saying, please say kidney. So for you, kidney, your kidney is being restored and being healed. All of that is uh, leaving in Jesus name. All the, all the disease is leaving right now. Just receive it, receive your healing. Terry? Yeah, restoration is the word for you, Rosalind. And your name is not Rosalind, it's Rosalind. And you are so, uh, discouraged and alone. God is answering the thing you have asked of him. He's with you right now. You have never been alone, but just put up your hands, receive it, and thank him. All right. If you need healing, call us. All you have to do is pick up the phone, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Psalm 30. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow. This is Pat Robertson. 
As I look back over my 90 years, I see a life of ongoing excitement filled with loving God and seeing His power at work. I've written a book called, I Have Walked with the Living God, telling about the wonderful things that have happened to me. It's my hope that it will lead you to a deeper understanding of God and inspire you to set a course to serve Him. In Pat's dynamic latest book, you'll learn how to receive favor, wisdom, and discernment how to overcome obstacles and live a life that is exhilarating and full of promise. I believe this book will help you step into your future, ready to trust God and receive His blessings in your life. Nothing can compare to a life lived for God's glory and purpose. Call now or go to CBN.com to receive your copy today.